Welcome to the crash that starts it all, the Great Depression. And in actuality, it starts before the actual crash, but this is the catalyst that pushes us into the Great Depression in October of 1929. Wall Street's in a panic as stocks crash, October 24th, 1929. And here you can see sort of dazed and confused traders standing outside the stock market in the afternoon of October 24th, 1929, wondering what comes next. So if you listen to the lyrics of Irving Berlin's Blue Skies, um, you can see that it really reflects the mood of the 1920s. I was blue, um, just as blue as I could be. Every day there was a cloudy day for me. Then good luck came and knocking on my door. Skies weren't gray but they're not gray anymore, um, really epitomizes that happy-go-lucky mood of the 1920s. So American industries during the 1920s, what situation were they in? For farmers, the 1920s was actually a really tough decade. Farmers had taken out huge loans for land and equipment during World War I in order to meet the demands of soldiers overseas. And um, following World War I, the demand stopped, but the production continued, and these prices then crashed, and you ended up with major farm surpluses, wheat sitting in train depots, rotting. Um, the results are that you have a lot of foreclosures of family farms. You also have the railroad, textile, and steel industries are losing profits because they're no longer working towards an international war industry. You can see farmers that also worked really hard to mechanize, um, and they were encouraged by advertising and credit to mechanize their farms and to get more crop yields. You can see the surpluses that started to mount. People just didn't even know what to do with their huge crops. Cute little farm kids. However, a lot of American industries we're experiencing immense growth during this time, and a lot of this growth was supported by the American automobile industry and the in assembly line and mass production of cars. This led to an increase in productivity in a lot of other sectors. You see an increase in motor vehicle registration from 1900 to 1920 as the price of cars comes down. More and more people can afford them, and therefore they are seeking those automobile registrations. So here you have the Ford Model T, uh, $650 in the mid-20s could get you a Ford Model T, as long as it was black. And Chevy comes in with its own car for under $600. Even Bugatti's getting in on it. The optimism of the 20s um, was huge. People just didn't even expect that the economy would crash. Um, they just felt like it was going to keep going and keep going and that it would be awesome for our future. A lot of people had unboundless optimism in the American market, both the stock market and, and the market of goods. And this optim optimism generates a lot of investments in the stock exchange. So the New York Stock Exchange had a great big boom during the 1920s. This becomes known as a bull market. And you'll still hear that term used today um, when the market takes a big shot upwards. People became sort of mad with investing and made lots of investments to get quick profits, turning around and buying and selling often in the same day as stocks went up throughout the course of a day. This is called speculation. And then investors began buying on margin, using either borrowed money or using their own stocks as collateral to purchase more stocks. So again, here is the stock exchange in New York. There's the, the bull that is now on Wall Street today to sort of symbolize that bull market. And here's a modern image of the New York Stock Exchange, very automated these days. Businesses were booming, lots of investments were being made, and so this results in over-speculation. Too many people, every little guy thought he could get in on the deal and make a few bucks. And at the time, there was an excessive expansion of credit. People were borrowing money left and right. Banks were giving money away, basically, with low interest rates and um, expecting a return on their own investments. The commonly used metaphor to describe this period of expansion or any period of expansion is known as a bubble. What happens to bubbles? They burst. 
or they are known as busts. In October of 1924 is known as Black Tuesday. Over 16 million shares were traded on the stock market that day. That was a record for the New York Stock Exchange at that point. And most people were just trying to dump their stocks as over the course of the month, stocks were starting to fall. And at one point, the Rockefellers actually stepped in to try and sort of pump up and inflate the market a little bit by buying a bunch of stocks to try and artificially inflate prices. And it was unsuccessful. Um, by the 24th, the collapse is complete. So the consequences, uh, brokers, clients panic and attempt to withdraw their money from banks. The problem was the banks didn't have money. And you guys experienced this a little bit in your little simulation. And when they don't have money, they close. And that makes people even more frustrated and angry and fearful. And they begin to really hang on to their money. Um, people then stop making investments and they stop saving in banks as well. So here you can see the greatest crash in Wall Street history. Um, this newspaper is reporting 19 million shares changed hands that day. And it's pretty intense. You can see in September of 1929, the stock market's pretty high. And then a month later, it's at an all-time low. So a huge collapse. And here you go. We buy this car so that I can have all the cash that I lost on the stock market. So the major causes of the crash, over speculations of investments were being made on borrowed money and businesses aren't really actually growing. Um, you have the expansion of credit and people buying on margin and people just were not saving their money. The stock market crash is going to single the start of the Great Depression.